Phyllis Hamilton, do you take this man to be your legal, lawfully wedded husband, to love, honor, and obey until death do you part? I, I do. Oh! Take her into the ante room. Yes, sir. Dr. Rayburn, I'm Pat Hunter from the Chronicle. Please, this is no time for interviews. Shall I telephone for the ambulance? No. The undertaker. She's dead. I can go now. Is that all? Gee, thanks. Good evening, Dr. Rayburn. I'm from the Forest Mortuary. Forest Mortuary? Why, two of your men just drove away with the body a few moments ago. Well, there must be some mistake. There weren't our men. Well, I've heard of ambulance chasing, but this is something new. New? It's sensational. Another kidnapping of a dead bride. What a story! And a few minutes ago, one of the men who helped remove the body of the mysteriously dead bride was apprehended by the police. Go on, keep talking. Well, when I told you I was standing on the corner minding my own business when along comes a stiff wagon. A guy pokes his head out of the window and asks me if I want to make a couple of bucks. How many men were with that hearse? Two. At least all I could see. What'd they look like? I don't know. It was dark. I didn't pay no attention to faces. You notice the license? What, with two bucks staring me in the face? Come on, tell the truth. What'd you do with the corpse? I didn't do nothing with it. What I tell you is the truth. So help me. As District Attorney, Mrs. Wentworth, I assure you that there won't be any trouble. You can proceed with the wedding as planned. Well, we want some assurance besides words. We want protection. I'll have plenty of men guarding the chapel. And if I'm any judge of the appearance of your daughter, she looks as healthy as she is beautiful. <laughs> Oh, really, Mother, I think you're making much ado about nothing. You're not worried, are you? Not in the least. Well, if we have protection, I'll feel much better about it. You'll have it all right, Mrs. Wentworth. Tell Jones and Riley to wait. I'll pick him up. That's the Wentworth mother and daughter, isn't it? Is the wedding called off? Certainly not. And there isn't going to be any trouble either. That's what all the rest of them thought. I can't answer for Miss Wentworth's health, but your paper can print one thing, and that is that there'll be no more theft of girls' bodies. Yeah. This will get you and Sandy into the wedding, and I want plenty of photographs. Oh, I don't worry, boss. I got enough film to cover the Russian front. <laughs> oh, Mr. Keenan, you promised to take me off the society column. Oh, quit beefing. You're getting a break. This is the most exclusive wedding of the year. What if the Wentworth girl drops dead, too? You'll still tell me what she's wearing along with the rest of the fancy pants. Get me the guest list and don't bother about anything else. I've got three men working with the police and there'll be plenty more thereabouts. If the bride falls up this time, there won't be any snatching. I'll get going. What if I get a clue? Oh, I wouldn't let that bother me, sweetie pie. You wouldn't know a clue if it bit you. <laughs> I'll remember those words, stooge. Why are you so nervous, Mother? After all, I'm the one that's getting married. Oh, I, I just can't help it. I, I, I'm so afraid something will go wrong. Oh, forget it. Nothing can possibly happen. Oh, Alice! Oh, you look perfectly beautiful! Oh, I look all right. Oh, yes. Oh, I am too. Have you seen Dwight? No, no, no. Make it snappy, 
we're late and this wedding won't wait for us. Can I help it if we had a blowout? Serves you right. Why don't you buy some new tires for this bus? You know, I've been thinking of getting some... Hey, are you kidding? Come on. Here it's bad luck. Oh, not even a peak? Not even one. You'll see me soon enough. You see? <laughs> uh, girls, do you mind if I have these last few minutes alone with Alice? Oh, I know. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Well, Mother, you're about to lose me. I hope not forever, dear. Oh, of course not. What are you talking about? Do you feel all right, dear? Certainly. I never felt better in my life. You should forget all that silly nonsense about those brides dropping dead. Permission went word. Oh, thank you. From Dwight, no doubt. Oh. Oh, wear this next to your heart, darling. All my love. <gasps> what an unusual orchid. Well, I never saw one like it before. It's lovely. It's beautiful. The minister is ready, Mrs. Wentworth. Thank you. Say a little prayer, darling. You look faint, dear. Do you feel all right? the news to Keenan. Did you get any more pictures? Did I get pictures? I covered everything except a close-up of this pretty posy. Why, that looks like the one the bride wore. What are you doing with it? Presenting it to you, sweetheart, as a token of my devotion. Take a smell. Who ever heard of an orchid with a scent? Well, that one has. Maybe it's a clue. <laughs> what a peculiar sweet odor. Yeah, make a swell romaine salad. Pat, you're not going to pass out, too, are you? No. No, I'm okay.
kind of a gag is this? No driver, no license plate. Maybe it isn't a gag. Maybe it's a decoy. Well, maybe you're right. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Another abduction of a girl's corpse. Brunette, 22 years of age. Stop and search all trucks and suspicious looking cars. That is all. Burnside. Pile out. We're taking a look inside this rig. Sure thing, officer. Headline to read is Wedlock Challenge. Then set up an editorial attacking the DA's office for playing models while some madman runs away with the bodies of dead brides. Okay, Mr. Keenan. Send me up the proofs right away. Oh, so it's you. Well, of all the rotten stories that have ever been turned into this office, yours takes the prize. No guest list, and we don't even know what the bride wore. She wore this orchid. Listen, Miss Hunter. I have a great responsibility. I'm a public servant. Parents are calling the Chronicle frantically with tears in their voice, begging for news of their daughters. I have a daughter myself who's about to be married. Maybe she'll drop dead too, but she won't drop dead from an orchid. I didn't say that. Well, then what are you talking about? Every one of the brides that died and disappeared were wearing one of these orchids. How do you know? Well, I checked. Look at these pictures. All right, perhaps it's a coincidence. It still doesn't spell anything. Then where did the Wentworth girl get this orchid? The bridegroom didn't give it to her. Perhaps a dozen people gave it to her. Her mommy, her pappy. No, they didn't either. I checked. Besides, this orchid has a peculiar odor. That's unusual. Well, if you think it's a clue, why don't you follow it up? Is that an assignment? It's a notice that you're through if you don't bring something in. Okay, Mr. Keenan. <laughs> My little family, you're all so very faithful. Master, the Countess is waiting. Upstairs? Yeah. Oh, you must hurry. Mike? Terribly. You must hurry. Uh, I'm so sorry, uh, but I was detained. Please forgive me. Forgive you. You might waste time while I wait here dying. Dying. Courage, courage. Uh, I will not let you die. Better death than agony like this. Look at me. Look at me. Calm yourself, my dear. Now, will you hurry?
my dear. Come. <laughs> Why do you beat my son so hard? Because he's a beast, an animal. And someday I shall have to destroy him. My poor son, why was he ever born? Can you bear to look at me now? Of course. You're beautiful. And I shall always keep you that way. Will she live? As long as she can be of any use to us. She's pretty. Mm. Very young. All of them must be. Come, my dear. Look after the girl, Paga. Yes, master. None of the florists I checked with ever saw an orchid like that. Well, that's not surprising. This particular type belongs to the Stanhopia class. It's a very rare species. Do you know of anyone that grows them? No. But if you wish to find out more about them, I suggest that you look up a man by the name of Lorenz. He was the one who originally hybridized this plant, over in Europe somewhere. But I just can't go to Europe just to... Oh, that isn't necessary. He lives up at Brookdale now. Well, thank you, Mr. Smith. You're quite welcome. Looks like that box got a coffin in it, Jeff. Sure does. For Professor Lorenz. What do you suppose he wants with a coffin? Search me. He's such a strange, spooky guy. The further I stay away from him, the better. Me too. I'll take charge of this. Go ahead. Take it away. Try to get rid of it. Right this way. Where to, miss? To the home of Professor Lorenz. Lorenz, I'm sorry. I can't take you there. I, well, I, I'm out of gas. You mean you won't take me? Yes, ma'am. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I just... Uh... Is this the only taxi in town? Yes, ma'am, it is. Look, I've simply got to get to the Lorenz place. I'll make it worth your while. Oh, I'm sorry, lady, but uh, that truck's going up there. You might get a ride with him. That is, if you don't mind riding with a coffin. to the Lorenz place. What do you want to go there for? To see the professor. Does he expect you? No, but then I... Then we can't take you. Get off and stay off. Look, I've got to see Professor Lorenz. It's important. I said you couldn't ride. Hey, wait a minute. You've got my bag.
Would you mind giving me a lift? Well, certainly not. Where are you going? I'm trying to get to the home of Professor Lorenz. Well, you're in luck. That's where I'm going. Get in. Thank you. My name is Dr. Foster. I'm Patricia Hunter. Are you a friend of the Lorenz? No, I'm a reporter. I hope to interview the professor. You're his doctor, I presume? Well, not exactly. Lorenz is a doctor himself, but he has no license to practice. I've been working with him. We're trying to find a cure for his wife. Oh, I see. What type of people are the Lorenzes? You'll find them very interesting. Professor Lorenz is a man of unusual accomplishments, but his wife is rather peculiar. I expect you'll find them both a bit eccentric. Tell your master I'm here. Cheerful little fellow, isn't he? I told you they were eccentric. I'm inclined to believe you. Get out, you gargoyles! Get out! Good evening, Dr. Foster. Come right in. Good evening, Professor Lorenz, Countess. May I present Miss Patricia Hunter? How do you do? We have been expecting you. So you found my bag in your truck? Yes. There it is. Miss Hunter's a newspaper woman. I came here hoping you might grant me an interview. An interview? About what? No one asked you to come here. You are not welcome. Control yourself, my dear. I'm sure Miss Hunter meant no harm. Please forgive my wife. She's not well. Come, you'd better retire. So that's what you call being eccentric. Well, I have another name for it. I do not like that girl. She is here for no good. We have nothing to fear. Sorry, Professor, if we're intruding. Not at all, Dr. Foster. This is our evening for work. Please, be seated. Thank you. What do you wish to interview me about? Orchids. Orchids? Yes, I understand that you're an authority on the subject. They were once my hobby, but I haven't grown any for several years. Which species are you interested in? A very rare one of the Stanhopia type. A horticulturist told me that you're the original hybridizer of it. Have you ever seen one? Yes, I have one in my bag. I'll show it to you. Where did you get it? Oh, um, a friend of mine gave it to me. You see, I'm doing an article on orchids for my newspaper, and I thought that you might be willing to supply me with some special data. I'm sorry I can't spare the time tonight, Miss Hunter. You see, I have very important work to do with Dr. Foster. I understand. If your interview can wait until morning, I'll drive you back here then. If that's agreeable, Professor Lorenz. Well, it's quite agreeable, but I would suggest that you both stay here as my guests. Thank you very much, but I prefer going to a hotel. Just as you wish. I think it would be foolish to go out in such a storm. The professor is right, Miss Hunter. Perhaps we had better remain. However, if you insist, I'll gladly drive you back to the village. I'm afraid that would be an imposition since you've so much work to do. Thank you, I'll stay. Toby, so we will show you to your rooms. Toby, so take up Miss Anders' bag. Good night. Good night. I'll meet you in the study soon. Very well. Why did you ask her to spend the night here? 
A very special reason. You sleep very good. Maybe. <laughs> the few times I've stayed overnight here, I slept unusually well. It must be wonderful to have nerves like that. Tell me, just how well do you know these people? Why, actually, not very well. I've only recently moved into the village. You know, a young doctor trying to establish a practice. Well, I must be keeping you from your work. Good night, doctor. Good night. Yes, you are beautiful. How did you get in here? So young, such lovely skin. Sometime you too will be a bride. I know where you're going. <clears throat> Someday, the master will catch you. <clears throat> then you'll be sorry.
doctor. Dr. Foster! Dr. Foster! Dr. Foster! What's wrong? I just saw someone in my room, a horrible-looking creature. He disappeared back there. Apparently, he's not here now. Where did you see him? Leaning over my bed. Of course, you might have been dreaming. I'm positive I wasn't. Earlier in the evening, Mrs. Lorenz suddenly appeared and then disappeared. Do you suppose there's another entrance to this room? Well, I doubt it. Why don't you try to go back to sleep? No one's going to harm you. I'm sure it was just a nightmare. I think this whole place is a nightmare. Professor Lorenz and his wife were actually sleeping in coffins. I saw them. We often find it difficult to explain the peculiarities of some people. Well, I guess so. I'm awfully sorry to bother you. It was no trouble. If you're frightened, call me again. Good night. Good night. What is the trouble? Hmm. The angel. He has disturbed our guests. Always the angel. He is a menace to us. Yes. I think the time has come to dispose of him.
I'm sorry, I thought you were up. Up? I've been up all night with dead people. Dead people? What do you mean? Come in and I'll tell you. What kind of a place is this? Last night I had the most horrible experience of my life. Well, what was it? I saw lots of girls in crypts down underneath this house. Pardon me. What was that you were saying, Miss Hunter? Why have you a mausoleum in the basement? Marcelio, what are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. All those dead girls and that horrible dead creature. My dear, you must have had a bad dream. Now look, Professor, this was no dream. When did you see all this? Shortly after I called you and told you about that horrible creature in my room. Is that true, Dr. Foster? Why, I don't recall anything about it, Miss Hunter. You must be mistaken. Well, if I was dreaming, it was the darndest nightmare I've ever had. Well, I slept very soundly myself. Miss Hunter was rather upset, I think, when she retired. You see, in our dreams, our minds play strange tricks on us sometimes. Yes, I suppose so. Oh, Professor, that orchid I brought up here to show you is gone. I couldn't find it in my bag. That's too bad. Perhaps you forgot to pack it. Will you be down soon? Yes, right away. Are you coming, Doctor? Of course. Shall we go into breakfast? No, thank you. I've got to get back to the city. Will you drive me to the station, Dr. Foster? I'll be glad to. But what about the interview? Well, that'll have to wait until some other time. I just remembered an appointment at the office. So I've got to catch the next train. You'll excuse me, Countess? Yes, I will excuse you. Oh, Professor, do you also make a hobby of collecting coffins? Why, yes, in a manner of speaking. I find a coffin much more comfortable than a bed. Many people do so, my dear. Is it so strange that I accept one while waiting for eternal rest? No, I suppose not. Well, thank you for your hospitality. Goodbye. 
I trust we will meet again. It has been so nice meeting you. Don't tell me I'm still dreaming. Why, what do you mean? That grave digger. He's real, isn't he? Oh, he's real, all right. But I hardly think he's a grave digger. More likely laying the foundation for a house. You're a trusting soul, aren't you, Doctor? Is that a crime? No, on the contrary. I envy you. Are you trying to make me believe you're one of those hard-boiled reporters that we read about or see in the movies? No, but working on a newspaper, one becomes cynical and suspicious. <laughs> meeting you, Miss Hunter. I hope to have the pleasure of seeing you again. I have a hunch you will, Dr. Foster. Oh, tell me. Just why did you come up here? Or is it the secret? It is, but somehow I feel that I can trust you. You can. You've heard of the case of the vanishing brides. Why, surely. I think I have a clue. You don't mean that you suspect... Yes, I do. I want to show you something. What are these? Why, they're orchids, of course. You bet they're orchids. And they didn't grow in my dreams. They're exactly like the one that disappeared from my bag. Where did you get them? I found them on the floor beside my bed this morning. The person who came into my room last night must have brought these with him. That seems like a logical explanation. There's no question about it. Honestly, Doctor, don't you remember meeting me in the hallway last night? No, I don't. And if I did, I... I must have been asleep. Either that or you were hypnotized. Yes, that's quite possible. Well, watch your step. And if you discover anything, phone me. That's a promise. Goodbye. Not goodbye. Au revoir. All right, print the story on page one. Keep your fingers crossed that this paper isn't sued for libel by some of these phony suspects that the police are bringing in. Why don't I get me a Rembrandt of the guy they just brought in? I don't want photographs. I want real clues. The DA's office can't pick up the madman who's stealing the bodies of these dead girls. Maybe we can. Okay, I'll throw it in a wastebasket. No, I'll have it developed. Doyle, where's Lefty? Over at Central Station. The only thing he gets over there is a game of gin rummy. Tell him to get back here. Well, I got something. I'll say you have your fire. What do you mean? You can't do that to me. Listen, just because the bodies of dead girls disappear is no reason why you can do a vanishing act. But you gave me the assignment. Yeah, I suppose I did. All right, where have you been? What have you uncovered? Well, hey, not so fast. Listen, Mr. Keenan, last night I went through the most gruesome experience of my life. You should talk. All my life has been a nightmare. Well, you can rest easier now because I've seen plenty. If I can only prove I wasn't dreaming. Dreaming? I had a dream last night myself. I dreamed you gave me that raise you've been promising me. All right, Madam Zora, go on with your dream story. Well, there's a certain Professor Lorenz that lives upstate. He knows all about orchids, but insists that he doesn't grow them anymore. Yet I found these in my bedroom this morning. Listen, Dizzy, you didn't go off someplace and get married, did you? No, I didn't. But I saw the bodies of those other missing brides. All right. Now, take it easy. Stop breathing hard, Pat, and tell me all about it. Did you really see any bodies? Oh, yes and no. I see. Just a bit of ectoplasm. Well, I'm sure I did, though, only... Oh, I can't explain it. Yeah, you're suffering the same way I am. I see brides everywhere, hear wedding bells ringing in my ears. And I saw a dead man, too. A monstrosity. Do very well. I'd like to see Miss Hunter. Oh, I'm sorry. She's busy. She's with Mr. Keenan. It's very important that I see her. I'm Dr. Foster. I wonder if you'd mind announcing me. Mr. Keenan, there's Dr. Foster here. Insists on seeing Miss Hunter. Tell him he can have all of her time from now on. That's the Dr. Foster I was telling you about. Maybe he has more evidence. All right, send the sawbones in. Hey, look, if you don't mind, I'm going out for a nervous breakdown. Well, Doctor, you almost beat me here. Yes, I drove down. Dr. Foster, Mr. Keenan, my editor. Very glad to meet you, Mr. Keenan. This cub reporter of mine has been telling me a weird story about a certain Dr. Lorenz up in your neighborhood. It's weird, all right, but I'm confident it's true. After you left, I looked around the station to find out if Lorenz had any of the coffins assigned to him. I found a consignment, all right. 
And instead of a coffin, it was a box filled with this stuff. So what? That's ordinary garden moss. It's moss, all right, but not ordinary. This is a special type used by florists and hybridizers for growing orchids. It's called osmondin. Which proves that he does grow orchids like these. And the same kind were worn by every one of the brides that died. Well, maybe it is a clue. But how do I know that the rest isn't a cockeyed nightmare? She admits that you don't remember talking to her. I could have talked to her while in the somnambulistic state, under the influence of hypnotism. Oh, now, wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that this Professor Lorenz is a hypnotist as well as a horticulturist? Why not? My short acquaintance with him has convinced me that he's a man of unlimited talents. He's strange, peculiar. I've even suspected him of being insane. But the fact remains, he's not only a doctor, but a physicist and a scientist of great ability. How about this hot-headed wife of his? I hesitate to bring her into the case at all. Professional ethics forbids a doctor talking about his patients. Oh, forget about your ethics, doctor. After all, we're after a criminal. How does this woman fit into the picture? Come on, tell us all you know. The peculiar fact about her is that although she has the appearance of a young woman, her heart and arteries indicate that she's at least 70 or 80 years old. Well, that doesn't explain anything. Certainly doesn't explain why Dr. Lorenz should steal these dead girls. It's possible they may still be alive. Alive in a cataleptic state? That's it. All right, all right. What are your other deductions? Well, simply this. These young girls, whether dead or alive, are being used by Lorenz in some manner as human guinea pigs to sustain his wife in a youthful state. Oh, that's preposterous. It's nothing of the kind. Scientists are finding out every day that glands and hormones have a lot to do with life and health. The glands in our bodies help determine the condition of our teeth, the texture of our hair. All right, we'll admit all that. But I wouldn't dare print such a fantastic story. I bring you the biggest story of the year and a chance to get this newspaper a real scoop, and you call it fantastic. All right, I'll put Doyle on it to track it down. I'm afraid you won't get very far. Professor Lorenz is a clever man, clever enough to withstand any investigation and destroy any evidence. Why not trap the fellow? How? Well, he steals dead brides, doesn't he? Oh, now, look, Pat, do you want to be a June bride? Well, sure. I mean, that is, no, not yet. Anyway, Lorenz knows me. All right, then stop talking nonsense. This paper can't assume the responsibility of such a harebrained scheme. Oh, please, Mr. Keenan, you can't pass up an opportunity like this. There she is. Cigarette? Hey, she's cute. Um, well, would you like to dance? Later. Business before pleasure, you know. Hello, Peggy. Hello, Pat. Miss Woods, Dr. Foster. Good evening, Miss Woods. How do you do? I have something important to tell you. I'm all ears. Let's go to your dressing room. Okay. I won't be long. All right. Peggy, I've landed a good part for you. A chance to prove your talent. Really? What is it, a picture or a play? Neither one. My paper's going to stage a phony wedding, and we want you to be the perfect June bride. Now, wait just With a minute. With bridesmaids and flowers and all the trimmings. What is it, a circulation stunt? No. You've heard of the case of the vanishing bride. Sure. Well, this is a plan we have to trap the person who's been stealing their bodies. Are you kidding? Certainly not. The job will pay you plenty. How will I collect if I'm dead? You won't be dead. All you have to be careful of is not to smell any flowers. All I do is lie six feet underground and push them up. Nix, count me out. Listen, Peggy, I'm offering you a chance to get your picture on the front page of every newspaper in this country. Overnight, you'll be famous. Broadway producers and Hollywood studios will be offering you contracts. Why, it's the chance you've been waiting for. She's the most unusual type. Such fascinating eyes. She'll make a charming addition to our family. June 20th. A date we shall not forget. Father, what are you doing in this part of the house? Master, I keep hearing my son's voice calling for me. Your son is better off where he is. Go back to your work. Master, you shouldn't have done it. He didn't deserve to die. Do what I say and don't come up here again. Yes, master. Well, everything's all set. She's young and pretty. Yeah. What assurance have we that this Lorenz guy will show up to make the snatch? And what happens if he does kidnap this fake bride? 
Well, the private chapel and neighborhood will be covered with guards, and, well, Lorenz hasn't a chance to escape. Mm. Providing he shows up. And if he doesn't, I'm the sucker and I'll 500 bucks. And if he does, you have an exclusive story with big, juicy headlines. I hope you're right. Well, blushing bride, here's where you go on for your big scene. Or big flop. My knees are shaking. There's nothing to be afraid of. Here's your bouquet and the phony orchid. Now, don't forget to put on your act. Leave that to me. You got plenty of photographers out there? Certainly. And what about the cops? How many times do I have to tell you nothing's going to happen to you? Oh, uh, Miss Hunter. Yes? Uh, I wanted to ask you, in this ceremony, shall we use the word cherish or obey? You mean for the bride? Yes. Well, just for this once, let's put the old-fashioned word in. Obey. I've marked the words here. Just read the ceremony slowly, solemnly. Yes, I understand. I hope what you're doing isn't wrong. It's all in good cause. Well, I suppose it is. Well, if you need me, you'll find me in my study. Thank you. You've been grand, Reverend. Oh. You'd better go get ready. What do I do now? Just march down the aisle and don't forget to faint at the altar. Well, here goes nothing. How's everything going? All right so far, I guess. Good. Ceremony's about to begin. I certainly hope somebody shows up besides these ham actors I'm paying. You know, it seems to me that if Lorenz were ready to strike, he'd have sent an orchid. Just a minute. I'll take that. Did you say orchid? And I'll take you with it. There you are. Looks like our man's going to pounce all right. It looks like you're right. Also, Dr. Foster? It certainly is. The minister would like to speak to you in his study, Miss Hunter. But, oh, you mean the real minister? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'll be right back. You wanted to see me, Reverend? Where's Pat? The minister sent for her. I'll be right back.
Toby, my son. Where is Toby, master? Toby's gone. Careless. You shouldn't have left. Stop whimpering. Where's the countess? Waiting as usual. Hurry up. Let's go. We'll be finished before anyone finds us. But the bright, what will we do without them? Yes, we'll leave them here. Which means they will perish. Oh, we didn't hope that they'll find other girls. In the meantime, we take this one with us. What are you waiting for? Well, my dear, again we meet, only under different circumstances. I would have preferred that you would be a bride, but it really doesn't matter. It will serve our purpose just as well. Now both of my sons are gone. You betrayed me, man. <laughs> I heard enough. There's work to do. Stay here and cover that room. Your hand is unsteady. We've got headlines to write. Do I get a byline? <laughs> After this, you can have a clothesline with my shirt on it. I now pronounce you man and wife. Finally make a newspaper woman out of you, and then you have to go and quit. And to think that this was the cause of it all. <laughs> Video, silo video, no silo video, silo video, no silo video, silo video, no silo video, silo video.